Welcome to my channel. I'm the Dark Lord of Optics, and what I bring you here is a thinking man's take on guns and optics with occasional forays into politics. Thank you for being here. Alright folks, this is uh, a quick disassembly video for the Strasser RS-14. It's one of the, well, there are a lot of things impressive about this gun, but one of the Really impressive ones in how easy this thing is to take down. I have a major thing about takedown guns. Strasser does have some very nice videos on how to take these things down, but I figured I'm gonna do a quick one to see that uh, uh, even the fat engineer can figure out how to take this thing apart. Um, first of all, the gun is unloaded. To take out the magazine, there are two buttons on two sides of this thing. If you press just one button, nothing happens. You have to squeeze on two sides then the magazine pops out. So if you just lean the gun against something, pressing something on, uh, uh, on one side doesn't do anything. There's a button here to take the bolt out. It comes out here. The next thing is to take out the trigger group. There is a little bit of a latch here that you can pull and then the trigger group comes out. This is where the really brilliant stuff starts because all of the tools you need to take this thing apart are contained within the gun. And in a trigger group right in here, there is a little Allen wrench that you take out. And the way it sits here, you know, it's held under tension. And when the trigger group is inserted into, uh, into the action, there's no way uh, for that, uh, for this little Allen wrench to come out. At the base of the handguard, there's a little slot where the Allen wrench goes. And you just basically unscrew it. It just takes a couple turns. And the handguard just comes off forward. Okay, we'll put the Allen wrench down. This exposes where the barrel is uh, connected uh, to the action. Now, the inside the handguard is a little tool that's helpful, probably not necessary, you can do it with other things, but helpful for taking the action apart. You insert it in here and you just basically rotate this down. I don't know, it's more than 90 degrees, degrees, 120 degrees, something like that. Once you do that, there's this clamping block here, and the barrel just comes out, and then you can replace it with a, a different barrel. Uh, go back to this one. I've tried to shoot a few groups, taking barrel in and out uh, after uh, every shot, and overall aggregate group size did not change, really, compared to me just shooting a group. That means it is within my ability to shoot in terms of accuracy in my hands with the front support and the rear unsupported. The rifle, uh, this is a 22-250 barrel. Uh, this one is shooting about uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 MOA groups at 200 yards with a little bit of wind, once again without the rear support. It is a measure of two things, that the rifle is generally accurate, the trigger is good, but also the rifle, the way it is set up with the stock grip and everything is very shootable. This shootability is something that is not really talked about too much. There are plenty of accurate rifles out there. Are they easy to shoot accurately? It's not quite the same thing as just uh, having the mechanical accuracy. So I, I mentioned that I'm a really huge fan of takedown guns. I am. And uh, if you imagine this, if I had the scope and the QD mount, this one is not, but you could. Uh, or just uh, you know, have a torque wrench here so you can take the front off. The barrel, it's a 22 to 50 barrel, it's 22 inches. It's essentially uh, the same size, same length as the butt stock with the action and all that sort of stuff. So, I just dropped my little tool. Okay. Uh, if I were to try to put this into a compact uh, like Pelican case, something like that for travel, this is basically the maximum length you need to deal with, or this. And we know that this is right around 22 inches since that is uh, the barrel length. Okay, I'm going to retrieve my tool and we will. Uh, reassembly is equally straightforward. There's really nothing to it. You basically action put in the barrel there is a locating pin here so there's only one way it can go in so it reassembles okay take this tool insert it into the lever and you can probably use something else in the lever if you're so inclined and just 
lock it back up as far as it's gonna go. Now the little tool, which is really just a rod, uh, comes out and goes back into a little slot in the handguard. Okay, pop that in. There is a silicon sleeve on this tool to make sure it sits in a handguard and doesn't go anywhere, which it doesn't. The handguard comes back on from the front. Inside the handguard, there are two metal guide rods. They are probably the ones that keep it stiff and also they attach to the action, not the barrel. The handguard is essentially free floated. This is only part where it is potential a little bit of wiggling, but not much. The screw that holds the handguard in is captive, so you take the tool that you were using, take it off, and basically just tighten it. I've experimented with tightening it a little bit differently. I don't need to go all crazy on it, it needs to be just a little bit tightened, and uh, uh, we're good. The tool goes back into the handguard, and the handguard, excuse me, into the trigger guard, pardon me. And then the trigger guard goes into with the trigger in the correct orientation. Back and just clips in, that's it. Okay. Then you need to pop the the bolt back in and the magazine. And we are off to the races. There is really not that much else I can say about a gun that will really make a difference. I work hard to find flaws. I don't really have any. This is a standard model. It comes with pretty nice wood. I have a few different stock options. Um, if I were purchasing one, I would probably get... Uh, they have a laminated wood one. Uh, the model is called the TAR, T-A-H-R, after some Himalayan sheep or something like that. As is, without the optic, the rifle weighs, I think, just under 8 pounds. Um, you can set this up for a variety of uh, different cartridges. I think the longest you can put in here is something about 36 length. Uh, in Austria, uh, they list this one with a variety of uh, uh, different cartridges that I didn't see on a Strata USA website. I didn't see these on Strata USA website. I checked with the distributor to see if they can be custom ordered or something like that. It can go up to 458 Win Mag, some Swiss caliber called 10.3 by 64, something like that, uh, 9.3 by 62, which would be a very interesting choice for this gun. Uh, 6.5 PRC, which has kind of got my interest. Uh, for 22 to 50, there are a couple of different barrels that they make for this. One in 14 twist and one in 8. So one in 8 twist is also interesting. Heavy barrel 22 to 50 is a really interesting prong horn gun and stuff like that with, with the right bullet. Something like maybe 70 grain TSX or something from Badlands Precision. They make excellent bulldozer two bullets in uh, 22 that require a, a somewhat faster uh, twist rate, um, that's sure I said, uh, 306, 308, all the normal uh, calibers are there, and a couple of uh, more exotic ones. It's an interesting gun. Um, on the outside, it's kind of this whole old world wooden thing. On the inside, it works like a Swiss clock. It's perfectly made. Everything is perfectly mated. Um, the gun is clearly accurate. Uh, the tolerances are wonderful. I did not try to make it a particularly dirty, but I also didn't baby it. I had zero malfunction. And as far as cycling it, with it being a straight pull, this is probably the fastest cycling gun I have. I, since I haven't fired a shot, I need to press this button to pull the ball back. This is very fast. Right. Shoot. Hang on. I mean, this is really cool. Trigger is excellent. Right, it's um, the whole cycling business with this gun is just smooth as butter. Okay, uh, very, very fast follow up shops. That's one of the things I was 
uh, looking at really impressive I mean it's not a semi-auto right it is in my hands it's slightly slower than the lever gun but it is significantly faster than any uh, other bolt gun I've ever tried as far as switching calibers goes okay. let's check if I'm still recording still recording audio and still recording video let's start a new clip as far as uh, switching calibers uh, goes you really need um, three things I guess uh, you need the barrel you need the magazine and some are common some are different and you need a different bolt head bolt head is as I recall removable I So when the uh, bolt handle is forward, there's a little button there to release it. See this collar thing? I'm gonna pull it back. There is a little collar here. There are three locking lugs. When you are uh, pushing the bolt forward, they blend in the same diameter as the head. When you have locked the bolt into the action, I don't know if you can see this, but this basically sticks out to the side. So these four, excuse me, four locking lugs, expand radially, lock into the action. As far as straight pulled bolts go, I think this is probably the simplest, definitely the strongest lock up I have ever seen. The bolt head completely encircles uh, the cartridge. Once again, this one is for the 223. And uh, there is a, there it is. Uh, there is a little lever here you can pull. If you do that, the bolt head comes out if you're looking to switch calibers you basically need a different bolt head everything else stays okay. to put it back in there is a once again there's a pin here there's an opening here and then you just have to put it back in lock the lever and you are off to the races uh, if i ever get to go hunting in africa i might splurge and buy one of these a couple of calibers and just go have fun there's something about this it's not they're not as light as my fix and all that in many ways I, i'm more of a i want to say i'm more of a modern rifle guy but now that i play with this thing there's something about the aesthetic but i would probably not buy one with a wooden stock i'd be afraid to beat it up and i have some high end wooden stocks that are just beautiful i'd probably get it with a laminate stock with the adjustable cheek piece set it up for a bipod just in case and get it in probably six and a half PRC uh, fast twist uh, 22 to 50 and one of the larger uh, calibers if I'm going to Africa I might do a 458 with Chester uh, Magnum which since it's available in this or something else along those lines although 9.3 by 6 to 2 Otherwise, like I said, it's an amazing rifle, uh, RS-14 Evolution, as it says right here in action. Um, the Evolution part, it was an RS-14 before the Evolution part, essentially means the um, uh, integrated uh, Picatinny rail, so I don't have to worry about bases and all that. That is machined into the aluminum receiver. Um, since the bolt locks onto the barrel extension, the, the receiver can be aluminum. And that is largely it. I just super impressed it's beautiful amazingly functional hunting rifle um, uh, if you're left-handed it's you know if you have an ambidextrous stock the wooden stock is not ambidextrous there's a little bit of a comb here but um, you can get a, a left-handed bolt and the ejection port in action is already here so interesting gun I'm really impressed with it Let me know uh, what you think. If you've ever run into one of these in real life and you've seen one, let me know. I don't think there are that many of them in the United States. If you're interested in one for information, it would be probably strasserusa.com. I'll put a link in the uh, description. I greatly appreciate them being patient with me. I took my sweet time evaluating the gun. I did a fair amount of shooting with it. 
uh, I'm quite seriously impressed. Thank you for watching.